right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead, open those up. We're in the book of Revelation, the book Apocalypsis. That's the name of the book of Revelation in the Greek, Apocalypsis, which means the unveiling, the unveiling. And, and that's what this book is. It's the unveiling of Jesus Christ. He wants you and I to know what is to come in the end times. And today we're going to wrap it up in our bird's eye view view of the book of Revelation. And today's is the end. You know, Jesus tells us the end. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the alpha, which is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. And he is the omega, which is the Z, the last letter of the Greek alphabet. We know the beginning is in the beginning. God created the end. The, the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> And the end is, well, we're going to see it. We have it in Revelation. Folks, if you're worried, if you're anxious, if you're going, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Listen, listen. Our King, our Jesus, already told us the end. We know the last page. We've got it. It's right here. My Bible's open to it. Revelation chapter 22. And we're going to see how it all ends today. So we begin Revelation 19. Uh, it's, it's, this is the end of God pouring out his wrath on a Christ-rejecting world. During this time, Satan himself uh, will possess, completely possess this figure that John, the apostle, calls the Antichrist. Now, you've probably heard that phrase, the Antichrist. John is the only writer in the Bible that refers to him as the Antichrist. And anti doesn't mean antichrist. He's got pointy, pointy horns, and he's got a tail, and he's got the pitchfork, and he definitely has that curly mustache, and he has the weird laugh after he does stuff. No, no, no. Antichrist means instead of Christ. You know, that's what Satan offers. He offers you salvation instead of what Jesus did on the cross, instead of Christ. He offers you a life you can live instead of Christ. You don't have to be in a relationship with Jesus. You can be happy without him. Right, You could do it your way. He offers you, quote-unquote, wisdom and understanding and knowledge instead of Christ, in place of Christ. And those of us that call ourselves followers of Jesus realize there is no life apart from Christ. Jesus is my life. He is my salvation. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And we'll find out, I guess, right? Uh, we'll find out. But in Revelation 19 is where everything culminates. This is where we see the battle of Har Megiddo. And I love it. Revelation 19, verse 11. Now I saw heaven opened. Behold, a white horse, he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. We see Jesus again like in Revelation 1. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. That is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. He had a robe that he was clothed in that was dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That's my king right there, right? That's my Jesus. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. You know who that is? If you have your pen, write it in your Bible right there. Write me. Not me, me, not me, you. It's us. We're with them. We're in the Bible. If you can tell all your friends, I'm in the book of Revelation. I'm there. Where are you? Oh, I'm the beast coming out of the... No, that's not you. It's us. We're riding with him on these white horses. And you read ahead the battle of Harmageddon, verse 17 through 21. The whole battle, it tells us here, verse 19, And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered to make war against him who sat on the, the horse and against his army. You could just imagine how long and how hard Antichrist and the generals who are against Jesus have strategized. The, the unnecessary nations have gathered together to come against Jesus. Who does he think he is to come and tell us we're not in charge and our word doesn't stand and they're prepared. They've got all the nuclear weapons. They're ready to press the button and the whole battle lasts. Listen to this, verse 20. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who works signs in his presence. <laughs> the battle goes on for this long. That might be a little too long, actually. It, 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 there's no battle. 
El Mahlo, the illusion that Satan has, the illusion that the armies of the world have, that they can fight against God, it's an illusion. The battle, over, that quick. And it all ends, Satan will be bound for a thousand years, God will give him one last chance, he'll come back out, he'll do it again, he'll be thrown into the lake of fire, there'll be then chapter 21 and chapter 2. Chapter 21 is how God's going to make all things new. He's going to make a new heaven, a new earth. It's all things are going to be new. All the pain's going to be gone. And chapter 22 tells us that there's going to be a river flowing through the middle of this heaven. It makes everybody glad. It heals everything. It's the life of God. It's the manifestation of the Spirit of God flowing through the life of the believer. And then he ends here, verse 20, chapter 22. He who testifies to these things says, surely I'm coming quickly. Listen, we're going to be with the Lord soon. What suffering are you going through? Peter says it's just a momentary affliction. It's almost over. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's how it ends, folks. We win. The end is that our king wins, and we're going to be riding with him on those white horses. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, I'd encourage you, figure out at least minimum how to get on a horse so you don't embarrass, embarrass me. No, uh, we're going to be there. We're going to win. It's exciting. So, Father, I just pray, as we've looked at Revelation from a bird's eye view this week, that it comforts our hearts, and we know, Lord, how things end that heaven is so soon for each one of us. And Lord, we're going to be there soon. So God, help us to be walking with you in these last days and to bring as many people with us as we can to share the truth and love, to preach the gospel. Lord, anoint us by your spirit to make disciples. In Jesus' name, amen.